Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to the RGR Officially Unofficial cast. I'm now your host, Alex Dodds, and I'd like to go by Master One here. And of course, I'm joined by the delightful man himself, Alex, otherwise known as Nymera Hapgood. And we've got the captivating man himself, Sam, otherwise known as Initialize Hapgood, the Hapgood brother duo. Gentlemen, welcome back to the cast. I will be your host. We're going to be giving coverage of Detonation Focus Me facing off against Crest Gaming Act. Two of the are huge teams in the upper bracket as the bracket has got some distinction between the higher and lower bracket. What are some of your expectations moving into this matchup, gentlemen? I'm expecting team fights. I'm expecting a lot of team fights. I'm expecting people to die. I'm expecting the blood <laughs> to run through the river. That's what I'm thinking. Initialize? I wonder whether Nymera might be sorely disappointed. There is no. two <laughs> ways this game goes. <laughs> it is a game where CGA drag DFM into the dirt, and we end up with a bloodbath, which we can hope for, of course, as you know, fans of entertaining League of Legends. There is the other side where DFM rise above it as our champions of spring and just cleanly control the game. Let's play the map and put CGA into a difficult position because we know they don't play the map as well. An interesting narrative point, though, for DFM coming into this is they lost to Sengoku and they've lost to V3 Esports. Now, over to you, initialize first. Why was the game for Sengoku, for DFM, so... Why were they unable to close it? Why were they unable to win that game? And what does that mean for them against CGA? So I think versus Sengoku way back when, it was a bit of an odd draft didn't quite work out we saw some ideas there that yep. made some sense but uh blank and Pyrian were very very smart in that game and kept steel in a difficult position versus v3 it nope. made oh. a lot more sense they were uh i asked you sir about sengoku i misheard i'm sorry <laughs> And I was he just going... chooses to miss here, you know. And, and, take the spot and with here. that said, as you decided to move on, I will then pass it to Nymera. Nymera, let, let, let the real analyst talk, Sam. We, we, oh, we oh, back, oh, so. oh, rude, rude. But this, I, this, this, I, this I, I let siblings fight, so that's fine on my cast. Um, you should do. Nymera, so fight. I'll win. Oh. <laughs> Not in solo queue, you won't. Not in solo queue. Uh, fair that. So fair that. <laughs> you and me have to gang up and then maybe 50-50. Uh, um, Nymera, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Why do you think uh, DFM just weren't able to close it versus V3? And what do you think that's going to mean for this matchup for CGA? I think that one's more relevant to this game, if I think about it, because the game hinged on two really bad back-to-back -back fights where Sango, uh, sorry, mm. V3 rather, just committed really hard. They oh, they punished DFM out of position, and DFM weren't willing to leave a man behind. That time it was Ebby caught out trying to uh, split push, and then the team capitulated two team fights in a row. CGA, let's go back and look at their game versus the Hawks. They just kind of, uh, and Rassel Jesters actually, that was the big mm, one too, yeah. where they just team fight back-to-back. Constantly, all the time. That's what they do. They just keep fighting. Sam and I were talking in the break and saying that CGA might be able to re replicate this whole thing which V3 did to DFM, just fighting DFM four or five seconds before they're ready to fight, and maybe pull apart their team comp, whatever it is. That's definitely an opportunity and definitely something CGA will do because they will fight on a the coin flip. Even if they think they're going to lose that flip, they'll still go for it. Cause, they'll take that chance. Because, I mean, 50 50 sometimes just good enough. And if you flip your way to the victory, who cares? They only talk about the victors over. Oh, gentlemen, first off, let's just rip these band aids off because uh, this is one of our biggest ones. It's not our match of the day. We didn't actually discuss that one. I'm assuming our latter game might be our match of the day, but I will defer that over to you. Or it might have been a game that potentially already happened but uh i doubt that i doubt that um i think for me it would have to be sengoku yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah with that is a repeat match but we'll get into that one uh, a little bit later as uh initialize has already hinted towards some of the outcomes of that gentlemen who's winning this i'm seeing cga okay initialize uh, i will go with dfm okay so then it comes back to me and i'm siding with dfm because I think they will have a sensible draft. And gentlemen, we all know I love talking about the draft, but I'm not on the desk. I, I am on the host. I'm not an analyst mm. today. Meaning, gentlemen, 
interesting pick and ban phase coming up, I expect. Who do we think is going to be um, isolated? Who do we think is going to be prioritized? What picks will be coming out? The thing which I was worried about for CJ versus Burning Core is that they had counter pick for Aria versus the Scalia, and they chose something that was mm. just really bad for their comp. And the thing about Aria is that he plays pretty much everything. He plays more than everything. He's got the largest champion pool in the LGL right now. If they're going to reserve counter pick for him, they need to make sure they're picking something that isn't just good for the 1v1, it's good for the team fight as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm ex I could expect anything out of the mid laner. Anything. For me, I'm keeping an eye on whether Seros gets Twisted Fate. It's been a very powerful pick across mm. the world. DFM do love indexing into their globals at the minute, and that I Twisted think that's Fate has been a big one. But that is a bit of a risk versus Arya. So we'll have to see what goes on with that. How you punish TF? Throw an assassin at it. Throw an assassin. We know Akali is definitely on the table. We know LeBlanc is always on the table. And I mean, if Korean solo queue, they still want Force Z even when they shouldn't. So I mean, any <laughs> anything is possible. And Arya is Korean. So uh, that Z could come out of nowhere. Gentlemen, um, the jungle is a part of the map which we keep highlighting upon because, as we've said in previous casts, it's, it's what, everywhere. It's Still everywhere, and it's arguably maybe the most important thing. We're going to be seeing seeing Steel versus Unica. Initialize. Where do you think this matchup's going to be going? Steel's going to crush it. <laughs> like uh, Steel is just a very smart okay. jungler, and DFM also play around Steel pretty well, especially when they kind of got their game plan together. That's fair. Unica in the last game versus um, Burning Core once got the better of him again early. Even if he stayed up in farm, was always a little bit behind the play, couldn't be proactive, and that could really punish them. So I'm going to say Jinx, because me and Nymera said it at the same time, so uh, he can't talk anymore, but I'm going to unjinx him. God, I'm like a, oh, I'm like a three-year-old. Um, counter that point, sir, as he's attacking your CGA. So I think that um, Steel has pathed very, very well. I think he's been playing really well over the last couple of weeks, in fact. I haven't had as many problems with that I did have with him going towards spring playoffs and stuff like that. Steel's very clever. We've talked about that. Is he as ruthless as someone like Blanc Blancor wants, though? I'm not so sure. Hmm. I think that there might be a bit more breathing room for Unica in an individual level. Might put the Kosh onto those solo lanes a bit more, but I'm not expecting... Steel to be the person who's going to be the big proponent of putting behind CJ were that to happen. I think that's more on Abby. Ooh, okay. Well, let's switch over to that top side matchup then and talk about Abby and Nap. This is a matchup we've seen countless times. We saw it in the spring, uh, we saw it in the 2019 summer finals. We've seen it countless times before. Gentlemen, is Nap going to be able to survive another three-man dive up top plane, especially if Globals come out, or do we think Ebby's just going to fall maybe to Nap this time? So we saw an interesting kind of way of dealing with Nap in the last game, versus, mm. well, the last time versus Burning Court, where they banned away the Renekton, which is obviously very strong in those tower dive situations, and they banned away the Wukong, which Nap is so damn good at, mm. and he went towards the Cho'Gath. Uh, and we know Nap likes to do that. It's kind of something he's always has a pocket pick. Um, it didn't work out that game. Uh, and there is potentially risk if Ebi can find himself a winning matchup and you can kind of take Nap off those very strong weak side play, um, top laners, there might be room to do what they did last game. Well, I will let Nymera talk about his point while they're in pick and ban phase because, gentlemen, we've hit it. So good luck to both these teams. And, gentlemen, take it away. We're heading it. We're heading it off. CJ on the blue side, DFM on the red. Indeed it is, which means Crest Gaming Act are going to be running this particular roster, namely Nap, Unica, Aria, Gango, and Grendel. Detonation Focus Me, however, facing off from them will be, as always, Ebby, Steel, Siros, Utapon, and Gang. And some bans are coming through for CGA. They've taken away the Karma. So strong in the mid lane right now. So strong in the support right now. And that Twisted Fate which I'd kind of called out a little bit, don't want to deal with the global pressure. DFM, though, have gone towards the Callista and Varys, two very strong picks, two flexible picks for this squad. Well, if you don't have a seat at the table, you damn well break it. None of those cards are going to be played. TF taken away from Saros. That's something which uh, you are talking about as well. Uh, talking about these globals and CGA, talked about them. Not necessarily wanting to split up the map. They want to commit to those hard team fight. Uh, comps and TF can throw a spanner in the works. Bans keep coming through. Ephelios notably being taken off the table. That's one of those S tier AD carries. DFM targeting two more of those. 
last ban here for DFM. We're interested to see what they go towards. Nothing has been thrown at Aria as yet, but we do know that CGA tend to leave uh, Aria towards last picks, unless there are very strong mm. blind picks available. I'm noticing things like LeBlanc and Zoe are up, as is Azir. Uh, DFM clearly feeling they have ways to deal with that right now. Hmm, set is still available. That's always an interesting uh, thing to give one. DFM. Potentially something that CJ could pick up as well. They're going to first pick the Ash. So many teams are picking this up right now. We've seen it so many times in the LGR, um, LPL, and as it's kind of the, the third most picked, fourth highest presence because Varus, Varus has been banned mm -hmm. so much. DFM can pick up Ezreal Yumi here. Uh, they have the set available. I think they should lock that in. And this does potentially open up a lane matchup of Evi Set versus Naps Wukong. It that would be so good to see. Could, it could be massive, but instead, Ebi will go towards the Renekton, which is more of a takeaway from Nap. Maybe they pick up the set later as a support for Gang, but for now, they go towards Renekton, which Ebi does look to go towards. And it means that potentially we could see that top 2v2 Renekton plus X in the jungle being pretty dangerous. And DFM. They could lock in both. Yeah. Could just lock in both. Then mm. they do. So big, big brawl is locked in for the side of DFM. Set now that flex pick between. Excuse me. Well, every role actually can be played. It's technically a five-way flex because if you have a center in the bot lane, set becomes the bot laner. So you can have that in a five-way scenario. And DFM love to play that center. So potentially that is something that can come up. Going over to CGA though, they're looking at their jungle options. And this will be Unica's first trundle game. He's played three games of Graves, two games of Olaf, two games of... Graves. He has. That's what he's playing. Well, no, three games Graves, Olaf, and then someone else, which I can't remember. What it will mean is that picking up the Trundle is good frontline. The pillar is always a nice touch. Farms pretty damn well. Take away from Steel as well. He plays it super well. It also means that the Orn they pick up will not be punished. It's mm. going to be a great pickup for Nap. When we gave him our top laner of the week, it was off some killer oh, Orn engages in the late game versus Sengoku. His locks in for Nap here. DFM thinking about what they want to pick up. They have to lock in Ezreal. Ezreal yeah. is locked. You have Orn disengaging or engaging for an Ash. You can already get huge picks off. You have a Trundle already there for CJ into two relatively tanky members on the side of DFM. We know that uh, Set tends to go towards Deadman's play if he's not in that top lane, if he's in support, or if he's in jungle as well. So there are going to be stats which are meaningful to steal from Unica. This is once again going to be Utapon taking on that shouldering the burden of carrying into the mid and late game after those items have been picked up. We have to see what's picked up by Saros, though, because those mid laners are being taken off the table. On both sides, actually. We've seen the Zoe away from Arya. It would fit in pretty well with the front to back pop the CGA going in, so it makes some sense. We know how good Arya is on mm. that champion. Galio was the ban away for CGA, which, again, is another one of those globals that DFM do so love right in this meta. In Zoo. So we're left thinking, as we are so often... What's Arya going to play? What is he going to pick up towards this mid lane? Because he has had two of his staples, his mainstays in the LeBlanc and the Zoe, taken off the table. So DFM probably leaving that counter pick towards Seros in that mid lane, trying to get a uh, suitable counter matchup there. His calm has been taken away. He has Ziggs, he has Hybrid again, multiple picks. He can go towards Arya, left with less of his primary picks, but the Silas still available. We might see that come out. This is not a bad thought. There's a few key ultimates there which certainly work. Hmm. Nidalee was taken off the ball by CJ. We know yes, that Steel's, Steel's had some really very good that. games with that recently. Bard would be quite a good pick up here. It's something the gang is a very big proponent of, and it takes it away from Grendel, who has been playing it, and Gango and Grendel debuted the Ash Bard lane uh, in, in the, the LGL, LGL. Yeah. and it looks pretty damn good, generally speaking. So I can see double poke here, the level one from DFM looking strong. Not bot just lane. last game, we saw that Utsumi Ashi and NT ran over that bot lane through level one. They got huge CS leads. All of that was isolated. And one thing which we have not seen from Arya for quite some time now, going back into those playoffs, is Echo. Oh, yes, it is. Production is going wild. He was like, I reckon it might be the echo in our production notes. And he's just screaming out. He's, yeah. uh, he's, he's pretty proud of himself. And rightly so. Arya's echo is a force to be reckoned no, I with. Like it. I like it. Going to be the Thresh locked in as well. It's another lane as old as time. Ash Thresh is a good amount of CC. A lot of safety for the Ash. What will DFM's last pick be? Will it be Seros's infamous Heimerdinger is the question. I wonder if this is a trap pick, Kim. I think there are a lot of ways to deal with this Heimerdinger in this draft. Be. It gives you a lot of objective pressure. It gives you a lot of zoning around objectives and DFM play around that. Is that enough to convince them they want to lock this in? 
it is. They are looking for the objectives. They're looking for the big team fights around the areas of the map, zoning people out, and hopefully not get picked off by an Ashel. We get picked off by a Parallel Convergence or the Call of the Forge God. Saros is going to have to play very respectfully this game. Okay, he's got to be a bit careful. Arya as well has got to be a little bit careful about diving into turrets. It can be a bit irritating for the melee champion. Uh, at least he can reset one. his health bar, though. He can at least reset his health bar. That's exactly true. So I'll be curious to see how that goes. We know Seros is an excellent Heimerding. We know it gives Boyfresh. We know it gives objective control. What are you thinking about these two team comps we've now got locked in? It feels pretty front to back from both, but there's the kind of the flanking option here from both the set and from the Echo. I am relatively afraid for DFM. I think okay. that CGA have a lot of answers towards DFM's comp. I think that the Renekton can run over and on, and that's potentially some place they can look to early into the game. But with that double AD top side, Orn can go towards an early Forge Fire K, um, give V very tanky early into this game, and survive on the top side, play that weak side as we know Nap loves to do. I want to see Steel try and put this Ash and this Thresh into the dirt. I think if they do that, they have a good platform to work off of into the mid game, whilst also, you know, not allowing Nap to play that weak side against the uh, Renekton, which will probably be the favorable for the CGA draft. And after that point, you're kind of left with once again, Ario looking for some miracle plays. And, you know, there's only so many of those under the hat. There are. And I think it's probably a valid statement there from Nightmare, but keeping our eyes on the bot lane, we saw that. There is room potentially to get some damage down onto the Ashton Thresh with the lane that Utapon and Gang are running. And with Renekton set, hell, even a Heimerdinger here with Teleport. There could be some big Teleport players going around the bot side. Of course, CJ are running a couple of Teleports themselves, so maybe some response available. The thing for me about DFM there is that they do have really good zoning. Right? And I talked about that a little bit as soon as the Heimerdinger was put in. But it's just something where like, if they get themselves to a Dragon Fight or a Herald, they have ways that they can keep CJ at arm's length. We're back onto the rift now, straight into the middle of things. Saros is going to do the blast plant turret leash for bot side, it looks Genius. like, which we have seen a couple of times before. It's one of those unique mechanics, but it can give you these small individual advantages across the board, which you're just not used to scrimming against. And Saros being so practiced as a champion, we saw him do it versus uh, Sengoku in the very finals, first game of the finals. He just knew how to take objectives. And seeing it now in these first jungle leashes, this is why you tend to ban away pocket picks, guys, because they know the little things which can make the game easier. And it's also one of those things where DFM are just really practiced with the pocket pick as well. It's yep. not something they're just randomly bringing out. DFM have been playing with Heimerdinger for years, and the rest of the league just has to kind of deal with it. Uh, and this is where it can be particularly challenging. We're going to see the blast plant start, as Namero was talking about. And as far as we're aware, they tried to fake out a top side leash. Whether or not that will have worked out is yet to be seen. You can see Trundle for Unica has found its way onto uh, CGA's blue buff, and it will be the blue buff start for Steel, uh, respectively, as well. Ebby just poking his head into the enemy blue buff st uh, side as well. So he knows where CGA are starting their jungle path. Arya going to be at the mercy of these turrets for the first couple of levels. However, he does have that time winder to keep himself clearing those ways. Hook misses level one. Does miss level one. That gives Utapon and Gang room to step forward and start throwing some of their own autos and cues around. But for now, looking like fairly even stuff. Seros using the turrets to just shove out against this melee pick of the Echo. Who can't really threaten the Heimerdinger until he's got a way to get in yeah. onto the Echo. So for now, going to get shoved in as Arya. Post six, Arya can definitely have a lot of uh, good combos onto the bot lane. Grendel landing the hook this time. Does land the hook, not much more to be found, and a bit of a trade back from a double Q. Ebby hits level two first in the top side and does trade with the slice onto Nap just wide there on both the Cull, the Meek, and the first part of the slice. So Nap just gets to walk away. It does so honestly in a level one to level two trade. That's probably not what we expect from Ebby. Normally he punishes people a bit harder than that, but that's something which Nap has managed to do on this champion quite a lot. Unlocks the brittle and uh, makes another okay trade, but that time with the empowered Q. Ends up getting a lot of HP back, does Ebby, and uh, we're seeing potentially a dive set up in the top side. Yeah, we definitely are. Unica's walking towards the bot side scuttle, but this is the DFM special. The top lane dive, level three to level two. Here we go. Can they get the stun? The they just get the yeah. TP, and they walk out, but that's a good stun, actually, to cancel the TP, and now Nap is still in trouble. There's the face breaker. There is the ruthless predator, and it will be first blood over to the Renekton. They're going to try and gank in mid. Seros does have to flash out of the pillar, but he's now under turret. Go double, double stun! stun! Oh my days, that's a lot of damage, but it, the aggro was on to Unica, and that's problematic. They're going to try and dive him again. 
There's home guards for Nat, but he's still in trouble. There's still flash available. The face break is there. They'll burn the flash out of Nap. Uh, Ebby is going to have to back away. He's under turret. No Maybe here. no one is here. There's no teleport coming. And Nap is caught under tower. Ebby, though, decides wiser. Probably too much CC right now. And they'll take the flash off Nap and not burn any themselves. Well, that was a series of plays, Nightmare. It was. Flash burn for the high Minigate is very important, though. That is something that can be returned to gank. I don't think it's awful that a teleport Ooh. was cancelled there for CGI. Of course, it does lead to Nap going down and that uh, return part of that gank. But when Nap manages to CP back, it misses the bot lane. I'm going to go back to that point. It does mean that Nap doesn't miss out on that second wave. Steel has set up this vertical jungling once again. It's not on the bot side, though. Ash and Thrash are doing fine on the bot side, but it is going to be that Ornn put under pressure on top. Yes, it is. And worth pointing out, of course, that Arya's flash there was blown as well, which can be it's less risky, risky for the Echo, because of course I'd rather trade that. Exactly. It's, it's less risky for the Echo, just because of back. mobility. But yes, guess who is back? Steel and Ebby are back at it again. There's the knockup, but no aggro's been taken yet, so it might be a little late. That's just so much damn CC. Nap might survive, but not quite. And no. Ebby gets to walk away in a second kill down. And this is what happens when DFM's top jungle 2v2 gets to play their game. Weak side nap is nowhere to be seen right now. He is not. And part of that is because Unica has not been playing up towards this top lane at all. Not in position for a counter gank like we have seen a couple of times here. Ebby going to be... Uh... He doesn't take aggro, that's fine. He's okay. But that's actually a good... Um... Turn around on the trade. He's the phase rush procs there. Yes, there's, there is a flash available for an Acton. He might have to burn it. We'll see. He's going to have yeah. to burn the flash, which uh, is a bit sad for Ebby. But that's what he gets for greeting for a turret plate. Flash for flash in that top side. I don't mind that. It does mean that the Renekton's next potential gank... Uh, not Ooh, get, I'd rather hook lands. I'm going to be the slow Utapon. Has got the uh, the uh, Arcane Shift now flashing away. But there comes the double. Re-engage. Steel gets the slow. They're going to get the double face break. And Steel just is everywhere. They thought he'd be top type, but he's not anymore. Gango now trying to find his way into the alcove. Trying to find his way out. Has got no flash. No heal. No chance. And Steel will pick up that kill. No life. You can add that onto the lifts as well. But Lantern there from Granul left a lot to be desired. Didn't end up getting Gango away from anything. And the double stun comes out of Gang. Also quite disappointing from the side of CGA. Potentially Thresh could have flashed away, lanterned Ash backwards, but the face breaker comes up huge from Steel. He's making impact on the top lane and the bot lane. And I, mean, I thought you were telling me that the CGA were the ones who wanted to be skirmishing early. What's going on? Uh, I, th there are some things which prerequisite to that, right? In terms of the first couple of clears, um, Abby's just going back in on top side again. The tools available for DFM early into the game, you got stuff like Cosmic Binding, you got stuff like Face Breaker, are far superior to CGAs. Once you hit the level six mark, that's when things get better for CGA, but they are being put very far behind in this early game. They really are. They're down a uh, thousand and a half gold right now. Well, really, that's 2,000 looking at it. Uh, and that is a big deal. No one has taken the first Drake yet. Rift Herald is still a minute and a half away. So that's all it will be. Ebby, though, has ticked over to level six well in advance of Nap, which is good news for DFM. There are no teleports available for uh, top laners or mid laners, though, so maybe not able to leverage that advantage unless they look for another dive. No, they would have to make some bigger macro moves rather than those individual outplays. Unica is still keeping up in his own farm. He'll be heading up to level six after he clears through probably about three more camps. If he gets the blue off and then maybe Krugs, he'll be having his ultimate available. And then uh, we'll see what happens after that point. Although blue buff handed up to Arya. Steel roaming down towards his bot side. Grendel's going to walk up, does throw it down mm. at the pink ward. It's a decent CS lead yeah, down here for Ganga right here. Uh, and that's partly because of CJ playing their, their map state well, right? We know that DFM have been indexing top. We know that Gang was roaming. It's meant that Utahons had to be farming from range. And Gango and Grendel have punched that. I have to say, with the tier and cull, I would have liked to see CJ contesting this dragon. Um, in fact, they still might if they sniff this out. Seals only got this down to half HP. And with no ability to fight on this Ezreal, this could be very dangerous. It could be pretty dangerous. Gang doesn't have level 6 either. But Especially here comes the Heimerdinger, and that's probably more news right now. I think he's got it. Going to try and secure it. There it is. Steel might have to flash his way out. Does flash. But that will be into a parallel convergence. It's only onto the Heimerdinger right now, and uh, Arya doesn't feel like the way through. Good magical journey from Gang to ensure the escape of Steel. Just a bit slow to the punch. They saw the play just a little too late. They do at least get that flash out of Steel, so no flash face breaker attempts now. Yeah, the Hex Flash, of course, gives you some playmaking opportunities, but it's not quite the same as having that regular old summoner in your cooldowns available. Dragon goes over to DFM. It's a Mountain Dragon, takes it away from um, the Orn. 
does, however, mean you have more resist to be stolen cut through by the trundle, okay. I guess. Nice so it's silver not, lining. I like it. It's a silver like, lining. It's not, much, it's not much of one. It's actually probably, yes, yeah, probably better played by DFM. They got the dragon, of course. I didn't get that. Yeah, of course. That is uh, very true. We've all seen the Rift Herald spawn. Look for where those resets are. But Ebby is wandering into the blue side jungle to throw some wards down to make sure that if CGR are looking to transition, it will be on vision. And hmm. Screw that. The bot lane just walks through mid, so it's pretty easy to spot that. Ebby's going to slice his way over the back wall. Oh, uh, does, does he? I, th I okay, he does that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. fine. Uh, the pillar there was an attempted stop. Right. But that means that CGA are first to this objective, but DFM are now looking to contest. Gang has level <laughs> 6, Temp and Fate available. Keep your eyes on Ezreal it. has TP, does have ult. Hook. Here comes the teleport. Ebby's put the Dominus down. Here comes the call of the Forge God. And Ebby just gets deleted. Used to the sub to get Utapon is here, but it's far too late. And CGA will pick up this objective and a kill. And this is the thing, DFM cannot fight when they have the tear trough on Ezreal, and when he's not even there at the start of the damn fight. You don't want to fight around this Ezreal, who is weak in the game. Ebi is the person who is far ahead, and he goes down right at the start of the fight. Advantage CGA. I guess he thought he would be tanky there with the level advantage with the Dominus, but that is the power of Trundle. You can't 1v5 at this point. You no. cannot. And if you go up into these face-up fights, things get very messy very quickly. Even with the Tempered Fate, that wasn't enough to disengage the fight, didn't come out at the right time, didn't hit the right people, and it's also the Herald to the side of CGA, and they can take plates with that. They can. That is good news for CGA. They get the kill onto Trundle, which is probably not who they it's absolutely okay. want. It gets him his jungle completion. But it right? does get the jungle completion. Uh, absolutely right. right. And uh, that is a big deal for uh, the Trundle makes him significantly tankier. Uh, all of that jazz. We're going to reset back into what looks like a, about a thousand gold lead now. I, for I, DFM CGA kind of evening up there with the shutdown. I now need Trundle just swinging a saxophone at people. I would really that be jazz. Jazz. that's going to be the next band. We've had <gasps> a jazz damage. band. We've had Pentacle. We've had KDA. I want a jazz band with like, Trundle on the saxophone. You just need like TF for someone like being like a, a jazz drummer. Yes, maybe maybe they can talk. No, no, no. You don't know. Don't have TF, TF as a jazz drummer. Look, think about it. Like, who is playing the music for Tango, Twisted Fate, and Evelyn? But the, wait, Hook actually lands. We got to talk about important stuff. Oh, he's not over the wall. That's fine. Right, we're good. We're fine. He's right. okay. Okay. So I'd say like uh, production is very helpfully notified. Is what about jazz? It's Jax, but the jazz. I see where you're going. Yeah, but, but that. Was... Imagine if you had a real instrument. Imagine if you had a real instrument. Uh, Gold goes over to Unicron. That could be place, really insulting to somebody like viola players. Let's be real. Like it would be. It would be. A oh, viola they insult player. themselves. Yeah. They're... <laughs> I'd love to apologize, but that, that's some orchestra memes right there, which was a bit unexpected. Aria in a bit of trouble, potentially. Going to get slowed down, going to get showstoppered. May have to burn the ult. Aria very, very, very low, but does get to walk under the turret. Has burned the ultimate. And There's two ults for one. Out. It is two ults for one. But I would argue Echo's ult is pretty powerful in keeping him safe. Uh, the, the, the temp from Steel here comes the teleport yeah, in. It's going to be a response, though. Utebon has got himself towards uh, the health packs at the back there as well. It is a response from Heimerdinger. Ironically, with Heimerdinger going there, they do lose a bit of priority and potentially give a free reset over to Echo, who has teleport to come back into the fight. There's one minute until Dragon, and honestly, Echo's ult cooldown is probably going to be up at that point. Whereas the face breaker, actually, the, fight, no, yeah, the showstopper rather, will probably be up at the same time. So all of that trade in the mid lane kind of leads to nothing, but it does, of course, burn the teleport and nerf. That's probably the more important thing because he wants to go back to that top side. Heimerdinger will be in position to take this Cloud Dragon uh, in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, it will do indeed. And uh, DFM do manage to get some damage out. And that gold lead that we were talking about is just no longer existent right now. So only a 300. Oh, Here comes teleport. teleport. They're looking to try and punish Abby. He was pushing up, but Steel is around as well. Going to try and get something. That is the use of the Dominus flash out from Ebby, and he does escape with the use of his summon spell. Bit of an overcommit there from CJ, burning yet another teleport. At least again, it's on uh, Aria, who did get that reset, as we were saying. He was looking to reset. Anyway, it's just going to allow him. It's just going to mean he loses about three uh, cast of minions to turret. Gets the flash out of Ebby. Gets the dominus out of Ebby. But it takes away your Trundle and also that Call of the Forge God as well. So their team fighting potential, their team fighting, team fighting prowess, greatly reduced from that play. Okay, checking in on some item completions as well. It is the Protobel in for Echo, which is good news, but it is the Mana Mune complete for Ezreal versus what is only part complete right now for Gango, which potentially could be an impact mm. in this second dragon fight, which DFM will surely be looking for right now. Yeah, at least you've got some AD now onto Utapon. He's in a position where he probably can fight slightly better than his Ash up until that first item completion. However, once you do get that Blade of the Ruin King, you're looking to kite that set and that Renekton into those team fights. In fact, CGA, after burning all those cooldowns, say, look, we don't need to fight right now in a rare show of restraint from CGA. <laughs> It was an attempt. We saw the hook come out. Maybe a bit of a steal. 
uh, attempted there, but it doesn't come through, and it will be the Ocean Rift, mm. ladies and gents. Uh, it is a high roll for DFM. It's high roll, but the question is, if CGA are ready to fight for third, fourth dragon, will they win? I think there's a chance they will do. Uh, still, coming down to the spot lane, there are no teleports to respond, and Arya's not moving. Unica is here, though. Dangerous for DFM to go for this. Uh, they do back away. The slow there showed they were on vision. Not going to be worth taking. Uh, with the wave pushed in in the mid lane as well. This so goes wide again. Semros there may be in a bit of a tricky spot. With Steel around, he feels free to go through. Actually, Steel just looking to try and find his way onto Arya. Gang still around there. Missed the face breaker. Still some safety for Steel after having missed the, the face breaker there, as you said. I have to say, after Nat died twice, he's losing relatively gracefully. I only mm -hmm. got that 10 CS deficit. We'll just point that out right now not looking the healthiest he's ever been but he's made himself up to that sunfire cape managing to get some armor stacking so at least cga they're not bleeding out right now no. they have some things to play around bot lane's going fine plates were even and of course they went over to unica with that herald push so relatively even all things have known it's reflected in the gold as well of course those kills going the way of dfm it's making up the difference and in fact we're going to see those individual player gold now it's a big lead for Renekton, it's a slight lead for the Trundle, and for the Ash, everyone else is pretty even, maybe a slight lead for the Echo right now. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's nothing really game-breaking, and that's one thing which you're going to have to keep an eye on. When do these leads become something which you can't really ignore? With the Blade of the Ruin King on Ebi, he very much can 1v1 that on. but the question is, does Orn ever want to leave his turret? And if he doesn't do that, then you have to ask the question, does Renekton dive the Orn? The question is, Probably not. He wants to wave clear a tower, move away from that lane, and then try and impact these team fights. We've got the second Herald spawning. DFM ready to respond to it, and they have TP on Ezreal as well. Ash has made their way up too, though. Big items in for a lot of people. Look at the Blade of the Ruin King, as we said, for the Renekton. Look at the Ludens in for Seros, but that's actually still going pretty low. It's got the face breaker, though. It's a big stun with a tempered fate. That's going to keep Unica down, but oh. there comes the Ash Arrow. That's a lot of damage now onto Steel, who's in trouble, but flash out from Nap, who can't stick around. Aria, think about going, but they're fighting into turret. That's dangerous. Seros burning they down, might. burning down, does get the kill. Grendel gets that one. It's a one for none so far. DFM still looking to contest, but CGA have got the better of DFM in this contest in the jungle. Hook, Hook onto Ebi. They going to think about some more, but Gango's still pretty low. Got to be a bit careful. DFM are going to come forward. They're getting a decent showstopper. That's a big fight now. But look, they don't get the stun because the face breaker missed Steel. That Aria? is a misplay. Aria trying to get under turret, but can't find any more. The use of the ultimate already means he can't go any deeper. Two kills for CGA after Steel misplays at the end there as well. He does misplay at the end. Grendel landing some key hooks throughout that fight. End up CCing targets in for a whole lot of damage. Nap for one also did a lot of damage to that call of the Forge God. The Ash ult landing onto Steel with the Brittle proc procs the Brittle and adds a huge amount of CC, meaning that set cannot be that disruptive frontliner that can also survive at the end of the fight. We're going to go back into this replay now, so I don't even have to talk about it without seeing something visually. Aria gets a fantastic at the, uh, trade at the start is onto Steel and gets himself that parallel convergence steal. And that's what I'm talking about with the brittle proc being propped by the next CC. Steel is not able to fight at this point. And then this hook onto Heimendinger just comes out of nowhere. Even with the vision of that pink ward in the brush, Heimendinger not having the move speed to step out of that, goes down very early into the fight. And DFM face themselves in a 4v5 situation, which does end up with another kill going the way after they try and split the fight. They know Trundle's there, not there. They know Orn's not there. Great Flash so going. stopper is not enough. Takes a tower shot, doesn't have the haymaker. Things go from bad to worse. And Gango manages to flash heal his way to safety there, just out of range of the face breaker. Just yeah, good stuff there from DF from CGA rather. Uh, a little bit awkward from DFM, and that gold is dead even right now. The big thing for me is that this Heimendinger I was talking about in a draft. I was talking about the Heimendinger can get caught up. There's a lot of CC there sitting around for Seros. He needs to be in a place where he can zone. Have DFM been in a place where they can zone off these objectives right now? No, they haven't. CJ went straight towards that Herald. And we were talking about how DFM, sometimes if you fight them four or five seconds before they're ready, they can look a bit vulnerable. And this is what it looks like. There was just the one turret up for Heimerdinger. The thing is, that would have been a great choke point for Heimerdinger. It really would. If that's where the fight was around. Yeah. And, like, and it was to begin with. You could see, but it was only the one turret. And the great hook, the great 
play and just being there a little earlier gets CGA some good advantages. Well, Arya just uses his full combo to steal and there's no turrets there to disengage him. If there's a point where actually you're kiting uh, backwards through your turrets, then it's very strong. And now we see DCJ grouping up in this mid lane, again, stopping DFM from getting up onto the map. Arya's going and for a big trade here. Bond, and that's going to be a well-blocked stun. Now Udipon is in trouble. Arya What's has to flash? get his way out. It is going to be the Temp of Fate though, and oh, now yeah. Arya is potentially in trouble. Great use of the Showstopper. Arya trying to find his way out, but shut down now from Ebi. It's a one for none, as Ebi does manage to escape at the end. Well played by DFM. Really good Temp of Fate from Gang. Ends up catching Arya, even with his E midway through animation. But with all of those cooldowns used and Utapon being very low HP with no flash this Herald should still take a chunk out of this mid lane turret yeah, there's no mana though on Gango so maybe if they can continue to stun they can find something but no it will be the mid lane turret going down okay. and that's a big deal for CGA not as clean as they would like so this isn't even a straight turret trade either because Seros is in top lane he'll be taking that turret Arya has teleport he'll be ready for this fight too Nap is wandering his way down to the ocean dragon if CGA get this again remember it stalls that Dragon Soul potential. We talked about DFM high rolling, but of course they need to get to that soul for it to be a roll in the first place. Okay, so trades across the board there. It'll be a turret for turret, a kill for a dragon. All right, let's take stock. We're 20 minutes into the game. We're looking at dead even gold. We're looking at a turret advantage to CGA. We're looking at two dragons to none. We saw the heralds already go the way of CGA. Gold lead was early on <laughs> very big for DFM, but CGA have done a great job of clawing it back. That remind yes, that is the roller coaster graph. That is the one which gives you all the G force, all of it. There, you're just gonna have like everything flying out your head at the end of it. Just, uh, just can't can't deal with that blood pressure. Like the, the G force is too big. Yeah. This this is uh, it's it's only the thousand gold swings back and forth. But uh, we do enjoy our roller coasters here in the LJL. <laughs> and never we're... been to Disney Sea. I have been to Disney Sea. I've never been. It's well, really I've never cool. been to Japan. Which oh, is well, really I, sad, but I, I, I did go to Disney. It's really cool. Uh, they they sell. Interesting beers at Disney. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, okay. And there's a weird uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull ride. Which oh, is no. Beloved. Oh, beloved. Oh, no. I, oh. I, I kid you not. They do love. No, ride. don't yeah. tell me this. Yeah, it is. They were the chosen ones. Uh, no, 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 balance no. to the movie industry. Not leaving in Crystal Skulls. Well, there you go. It's, it's a big ride there. And so one of my other casting partners, we have I, I, I've timed it. We have spent 15 minutes on successive casts talking about how bad a movie that was. Well, it's not a bad ride. Uh, it's worth saying. And uh, we're still seeing a bit of an advantage here for DFM oh, yeah, with yeah. the way the gold is. And I can kind of see it because the Ezreal was in that trough. They kind of got, it got punished a little bit in lane for that. But he's kind of coming out of it now and is looking pretty damn even without a big lead for things like the Echo. The thing is, though, yeah, there is no big lead for the Echo, but the playmaking tools are still available for CG. Really? With the Merc treads on Echo as well, it makes it hard if you to shut him down while he does have that ultimate, get out of stuff like that Bard stun or the High Midinger stun too. A lot of this will be about Teleport the execution. In. There's an ult onto Abby. Oh, it does get missed, but here comes the rest of the... CGA Goon Squad. Epi has got himself a Dominus, and it means very little right now. He's trading as best he can, and Arya goes low, but Darby doesn't really have much of a chance and finally goes down. But DFM are over by this Baron, and they do have a Heimerdinger. I wonder whether they start this, but I think it would be very risky. They're going to put down the alt turret, it looks like. Uh, okay. that, in fact, that's what they're doing, and they're going to start this up. Nap has teleport. Arya is making his way up, uh, but DFM will have to do this without their Renekton. They are going to do it without the Renekton. This is a bold call. They've got the te they've got the magical journey. They're going to try and use it, but Steel the is stone. very, very low. The stun was huge. Oh, this and is Nap awful. gets that. Oh, my God. They've leashed DFM. Baron. They've leashed Baron. DFM thought they were going to get the trade and get out. They're going to use the magical journey, and now they are There's the no ones that have to fight. This. There is no smite. What is this debacle? But there is a tempered fate. That's pretty big news. Uh, we're going to see whether if Abby can find a teleport back in. And now they have to try and find their way out. They, they get do Baron. Get Baron. They do get Baron. Can they get out though? We think they will. Ebby's going to try and get in. He's got the home gods. But CGA get Baron after an attempted start from DFM. It looks good until the interrupts on the magical journey come through. I've seen some good ash arrows in my time, but one which allows the enemy team to leash you, Baron? That is it's absurd, so Gango. Absurd. Take a fucking bow. <laughs> <laughs> Go oh, on, you, you cast now. All right, so you <laughs> saw the idea. They're going to use the Heimerdinger. They're going to force teleports. They're going to get their way out the back using the bard. It all makes sense until it doesn't. We're going to go back into this replay here, though, as Ebi finds himself in a one versus three and doesn't find the outcome. I, I find myself at a lack of words. It's an isolated death for Ebi. <laughs> we don't see those very often. And this time, you think DFM maybe have found an opening, but when you don't have the ability to teleport in because the death timer hasn't been stretched long enough, Honestly, DFM probably take this Baron down too quickly. They put it too low. They force the issue. 
and the trundle pillar into that ash ult just seals the deal steel goes down he can't survive isn't there for the uh smite potential the magical journey saves the rest of his team at least in the short term and the tempered fate tries to delay but it's not enough to get renekton back into the fight is still a at this point it's a 3v5 goes back into a 4v5 baron's already gone though and advantage cga uh and that is galling for dfm they thought they found a clever play and you know on paper we were there we understood CJ don't care about the paper. They just go for the fight. They this, go for the crazy outplay. And uh, Gango pulls out the mother of all Ash arrows. Yeah, and it, it just, this is what we were saying about, well, what happens if DFM fight when they're not prepared? This is what happens. Sometimes they try and make the plays, but it's not been completely calculated. Utapon gets hit by the... Oh, he's getting hit, hit by everything. It does take him very, very low. Has to flash away, but that's now the use of the ultimate and the stopwatch out of Aria does get out. Temper Fate, though, onto Gango, potentially troubling, but they're not going to find too much more. Gang has to flash out. Big turret damage coming in from the Heimerdinger, but a little more to be found. They do pick up the mid lane tier too, but it was a little bit scrappy. Thanks, your lucky stars, Utapon, that you get out of your life there. He, get, he burns his flash, and he gets a chunked out to high heavens just for this Ocean Dragon spawn. Once again, DFM will fail to get this objective. With the Baron buff still running strong on CGA, this is looking pretty bad for DFM. The game is continually getting stalled out. They're going to have to pull some smoke and mirrors, and they're going to have to do it during this raging inferno that is CGA's team comp right now. Oh, they're doing really really well they've got the gold lead now it's the biggest one we've seen thus far in the game looking up towards three thousand here Arya is shoving in this bot side gango and grendel are around as well dfm potentially looking to come and stall this though going to try and cause as much trouble as they can there's the parallel convergence but Arya is not going to go that deep it's a hook but only onto ebby and seros is pushing in the side lane and this is kind of what we sometimes see from dfm but the question is, what happens if a fight fight is forced before you can set up the turrets? We're going to have to see if the arcane shift is forced by something like a parallel convergence, because look for that Call of Forge God to come in right after. It's on cooldown right now. Baron's Next ended. time it's up. Garen has ended, but they will get themselves this last turret. Massive Baron power, power play for CJ. They take a lot of the jungle too. Seros doing his best to recoup on the other side of the map. Though. He's going to try and get something here. He's not got any turrets available to him. You can't see those little nuts and bolts hanging around. He used it instead to steal away the blue buff. We'll just have the wave shoving in. And... All said and dust, the dust has settled. It is going to be about that 3,000 gold lead for CGA. DFM smarting a little bit after not quite getting away with what they thought was a master stroke. That, 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 that's funny. I wouldn't use the word smart in a sentence for due to the last series of plays. It's, but it was it was all dumb clutch plays from CGA. We love it when they pull this stuff off. Yeah, and this is the thing. CGA... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. The swing CGA, is there again, DFM. How do you do this? How do they do it? And CGA, how do they do this? We have expected crazy things from CGA, and don't get me wrong, they are just as likely to throw a game as they are to win uh, to, to win the game with said plays. This time, it has got them towards a huge point of power. They're going to get towards three items on their carries pretty soon after this point. And remember, Orn upgrades coming in soon. You can have the Might of the Ruin King on that Ash, buffing up those stats. And with the Blade of the... Uh, sorry, the Death's Dance coming in on Ash 3rd sooner rather than later, Gango will be in prime position to take over these team fights if you're going to muck up those dives onto him. Yeah, you are. You're seeing good damage out of the, out of the Heimerdinger. That's sometimes what you expect. But that Ash damage right now is pretty oh, impressive. Gango, don't walk up. Don't walk Gango's up. Don't be sorry to come up. There is the Snot. There's the He pulls it out of the Tempered Fate, however. That means Gango, gone golden, going to try and find his way out. Has got the flash. But there is a flash in from Ebby. They're going to try and get the kill. But he's still being saved. Utapon now in trouble. And DFM has got to change. They've got Nap has got Ebby as well. And DFM thought they found the dive, but the Tempered Fate misses. Grendel is there. Arya survives. Utapon does not. And CGA win the fight again. Everything's fine. Falling apart, DFM keep looking to try and take apart this team conk of CGA. But when you try and hit one wolf, the whole pack is there. Gango, fantastic stopwatch. It started with a little bit of disconnect from DFM. I'm sure we'll see a replay because so much happened there. Gango gets away with murder and he gets out with a couple of kills to boot. My days. All right, well, that is two people dead for the side of DFM. They burn summoners on Gango. That's something. Maybe they can punish that. But once again, Gango, where versus Burning Call once was getting the kill despite burning the summoners. This time, Gango is surviving burning the summoners. And let's see the replay again. And this is why I don't talk about what's happened until I see the replay, right? Gango, I'm like, no, don't walk up. Um, 
it turns out Showstopper outside of the Temper Fate is really bad synergy. So that was a really clutch stopwatch as well. It ignores the high mid a stun. Oh, okay, and so we saw close. what happens after that. Aria, importantly, ends up getting right on top of Youth One. Follows him with the E. He manages to follow the blink there and gets huge damage also onto Gang, which forces this bard out of the fight. Saras has no way to kite backwards because the rest of his team's gone. They're dead. It means TJ walk away with a yet another team fight win. And they've got themselves a second Ocean Drake at the end of that as well. And uh, Goldie's starting to get a bit noticeable for CGA here at 28 minutes in. Of course, 4,000 gold this late into the game. Less impactful than it would be, say, 5 minutes like, ago. It's like tipping, tipping your serving staff with a gold doubloon. They are that loot loaded. Uh, there is also the Might of Ruin King it in is. for Ash here. So the, ex yeah, the extra um, three items for Echoes too, the Morale Nomicon uh, coming through for that flat penetration, which will be useful against some members of the team. And let's go. Baron's up again. And Baron's up. CJ is starting it. It's Death Dance in for Ezreal. Maybe that can be something they can see that has been started. Steals in the back here. Maybe looking for a two level lead for Unico. Steel. Big smile two advantage. Level, two level lead for Unico. It's been a while since we've seen this guy get ahead. We know sets in the jungle can fall behind in farm. We've seen it globally all over the place. Steel can't find the way. It's already down to half HP and DFM. Might just to give this up. They can't find their way to it. They have to look for a temp of fate. Try There's and the restart things. There, okay, is there it is. Fate. All right, now, DFM looking for the fight. Unique is actually very low. Here is the call of the Forge God. Nut finds one onto Steel, and he's in the front line and down, but that's big turret damage now onto Unica. And Arya has got to use his ult, but does escape. Now it is a four versus five, but DFM have got the poke. They're trying to force CGA away. They are going to force him away from the Baron right now. The, oh, the Grendel. Grendel potentially in trouble. Step too far forwards. There is the flash out from the Thresh. Ebby now in the front line, and DFM... <sighs> Lose one, but stop the Baron. You can see how this gets dangerous. If you use all of your big cooldowns to kill someone that isn't the Ezreal, Utopon can jump forward with impunity. They manage to disengage Arya there, and luckily this time, all the tools are used just before Dragon comes up, and it's in favor of DFM. Maybe they can zone off this time. They might have to give up this third Dragon. They might have to give up the third dragon, say CGA, and it's going down so damn fast this late in the game. And Ezreal has hit three items, has got himself an Iceborne and a Death Dance. It's going to be so much harder to kill him They're going right to force now. the Baron yet again, though. There is no Tempered Fate to stop it this time, but Ash is not here yet. That's their DPS towards Baron. Seros might be able to disengage it himself. Steel's here as well. He's going to be around the back has got themselves another pink ward in the back of the pit. The turrets are doing a lot of work in oh, there, and Arya has taken so damn low. That is Death Cap, of course, on the High Medinger. Came in a few minutes ago, and it's doing a lot of work. Arya going in on Evie, taking a lot of damage. But there's the ult. Steel is in, but he Steel's goes down again. again. Cannot find it, but the Baron does the go the way. And but that is very damn close. But once again, CG at the Baron, and Steel in these fights is looking a little bit dodgy on this set. These Baron dancers are not ballet. They are not bull run. They are street dancers going everywhere. And the actual hits on Gang. He does hit onto Gang. They're going to see if they can get something. And there's the parallel convergence onto Aria, who does go golden as a result. Aria, take the throw. This Aria is goes it! Low, but Ebi is low. There's two people dead. I don't know whether they can keep pushing. They're going to try. It's three versus five. They have Baron minions. They've got five members. But there are turrets. There is an Ezreal. There is a tempered fate, perhaps, from Gang as well to buy some time. It's going to have to be damn close. There is two seconds on Steel, who is now up. It is a five versus Ebi four now. Ebi said for 30 seconds, though. All right. They're going to continue shoving in. But I think they just take inhibitor and back. They're going to have to think about it. The health bars are pretty low. Uh, Utapon is here, but this is CGA. Of course they don't back away. What does Gang do with that tempered fake? Keep your eyes on it. Ari is going in, trying to get onto Seros. Take him very low, but they don't get the kill. Oh, the Forge God! There's the call of the Forge God. Gets that one, and the fight continues. Gango gets set again. Steel cannot find anything on this champion since the early game. Now they're going to back away, feeling far too low. They get a Nexus turret in response. There are teleports back in, though. CGA are continuing to put the Kosh on Ebi is back up. That's frontline. There is an Ezreal. What can Utapon do? He's going to have to find a miracle. Arya still has no ult. Trying to find something. Trying to find anything. The True Shop Barrage going for the minions, but it's not enough. And Utapon back onto the fountain. CGA now onto the Nexus. And CGA take down DFM in a bloody fight. 13 kills to 4. Forget CGA. CGA star top ranking on your Baron <laughs> plays there. No extra marking oh. needed. No invigilation. Everything comes out on top. It's a messy game, but CGA come out the victors. There is so much to talk about. We're going to have to recollect ourselves, collect our brains. They've flown all over the room. They've been bouncing off the walls as we've been screaming. Join us in a minute.
Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LJL Fish, the unofficial cast coverage of the LJL. I'm still your host, Alex, otherwise known as the Master One on the internet. Of course, I'm joined by the illustrious Hapgood brother duo of Initialize and Nymera, otherwise known as Alex and Samuel. Good gentlemen, we just saw Detonation Focus Me kind of get detonated by Crest Gaming Act. Opinions be damned. Yes, I see you, Nymera, holding your mug and looking smug as a bug as you well deserve to be calling that correctly. Gentlemen, the early game was in their favor, wasn't it, Initialize? Yeah, DFM looked good. They get the double dive onto Nap. They kill him the first time. They burn his flash the second. It's all looking DFM. Hell, the set turns up in bot lane and gets a kill down the bot as well. One, what, one, zero, two on the set. It's a two kill lead on heavy. Things look great. Things looked great, but they started to go a little bit shaky. Um, but DFM were able to score the first two dragons, but then it started going a bit shaky when the Herald started to be up for contention, right, Nymera? Yeah, so we saw on that second dragon, I believe it was, um, Trundle tried to go, uh, tried to go and fight, ended up burning Flash, and that changed immediately into the Herald spawn. Yes. And then when Herald started to be fought around, we saw that Ezreal, first off, tried to not be there, tried to take up the farm, wa take up the wave's bot lane, try and get some of that gold back, and then teleport into the fight. Hmm. He teleports in after Steel's already died, doesn't have any items to fight with, and then DFM have to fall back and lose uh, a lot more summoners as well, as far as I remember. Oh, that, and then yeah, they both everything fell blew all four just... bot lane summoners there. Yeah, yeah, and CGA just ca just just capitalized on that so very well. They're very lethal minded, and that happened with every big moment in this game. Yeah, that first big moment for CGA also brought them up to gold parity, which was a very important mm -hmm. mark. As for the first about fifteen minutes, CFM just had that in control by about one k, which, as always, isn't a huge amount. But if you can get the momentum going in a favor. You really should be pushing it. Gentlemen, it kind of was a, a bit of a to and fro for a while. We've talked about the Heralds. We've talked about the early dragons and the early lead for DFM. Gentlemen, what happens when DFM leash a Baron, though? Oh, right. Me... Oh, Come go on. on. Oh, do, do it. Both you of you. Last time. Both Fly of one. you. Both ha. of you. Oh. So, um, <laughs> this is what happens when they... CGA Burnt teleports to go after Ebby in a 3v1 on the bot side. Yep. They get the kill, but Ebby buys a lot of time. And of course, the thing about a Heimerdinger is you can use the alt turret to start up Baron really damn early and use it to tank up a lot of the Baron damage. You can take Baron really quickly, really early, and they were trying to force CGA to come out with their jungler and Ash all on the wrong side of the map. Yeah. That's all well and good until the best Ash arrow I have seen in a long, long time lands onto Steel after a Trundle Pillar keeps him in place, means that... Uh, DFM can't escape out of the back of the pit through the magical journey. Steel dies. Baron's down to 3,000 HP. Thank you for the leash. There's no Snite available. In all fairness, if DFM had just cleared that ward, they wouldn't have been baited by Nap. They wouldn't have been baited. Maybe not. And Maybe they not. would have just done it. Clear your vision, guys. I know you're professionals, but don't give an opening. Go on, Nymera. I'm sure you've got some other points you want to raise about that, just, Eric. Because that was a CGA huge just, turning point. CGA just hate the nobility. They're killing all the Barons. They, they really did, actually. They got two. Sorry, did you want something more from me? No, no, no. We can, I will actually bring <laughs> up a... Robespierre. I'll bring up a point for you, um, Nymera. As I, this was actually a huge point. Uh, DFM started actually looking for fights. Uh, something mildly uncharacteristic. They were diving. And a big one happened on to Gang, where Steel tried to dive with Ebby's assistance. Uh, but, well, I'll let you go further from here. Uh, hang on, which one was this? With so, Gango around the mid lane tier one. Oh, yeah. So, Gango had just picked himself up a stopwatch pretty much just for the next fight. They I say Gango, my apologies, sorry. Is, yeah, they think that uh, uh, a 1v4 is enough. No. It's, it's that, again, it's that scene from Halo where he's like, oh, we're outnumbered three to one. An even fight then. Gango kites back using everything at his disposal with a little bit of help from D DFM kind of whiffing one of their ults, doing the tempered fate which missed because of the showstopper. One CC doesn't land into the other. Things kind of get unchained. And then Arya dies the backline. Utapon dies. And then suddenly that just goes from bad to worse. DFM need everyone there to fight. And we saw that at the end of the game too. They're not there as a five-man unit. Things get really ma nasty really quick. Yeah, gentlemen, let's talk about that final Baron fight. Go on, Initialize. Would you do me the pleasure to run through the sadness of our prediction of DFM winning? <laughs> 
Back yeah. in track of screaming. Just so screaming. this something to this where we're starting to see that like DFM were putting out good damage. Ezreal would hit his items finally, even if DFM had been fighting a little bit off kilter with that early on. Yeah. Uh, and it was looking pretty good, actually. The turrets were up. They were doing a lot of damage to the front line. CGA, Grendel had had to flash. Ebby was looking like a scary frontliner. Then Set goes for a massive engage, but goes way too deep. And he is kept off the back. The Baron is still leashed. Uh, and with the snipe dead again for DFM, CG get another free Baron. There were multiple times this game where Steel just died. But from... Flat out. Oh yeah, he just died. He got caught out and that just gave a huge advantage over to the rookie jungler of Crest yep. Gaming mm -hmm. Act, who, talk about him. in all fairness, Unica had a breakout game in this one. And what a game to have a breakout moment, right, Nymera? For sure. This is the last game that CJ had remaining from their first round robin. Yeah, that's a seven. Uh, they did they did reprise that their one performance versus Burning Core. That's the one uh, mirror matchup they've had so far. Okay. But they had a really good record now. It was like they lost one game in their round robin first, mm -hmm. and that was to Sengoku, right? Six and no, one. No, Sengoku. Sorry, to V sorry, to V three. Six rather. and one they went in their first no, round robin. I, I, and considering how CJ barely scraped into playoffs last split, this is such a huge thing. And to come back with Unica <laughs> coming in here, having Two of the most messy Baron fights I can remember within modern League of Legends. He had to flash just how smite for that last Trundle. He had, yeah. Because yeah. he peels off to try and deal with Steel. It's still being leashed by Heimerdinger turrets, I believe, which are in the I pit, think so, something yeah. like yeah. that. And then he flashes in to stop like Ezreal stealing it with a Q, gets that. He had a two-level advantage anyway. This guy's pillars were separating out the entire team, setting up for all knockups as well. We didn't really talk about that interaction mm -hmm, during mm -hmm. the game. But yeah, this this was an ensemble performance from CJ. It wasn't an Aria pop-off game. It wasn't even really a Gango pop-off game either. It was everyone pulling their weight. And you have to do that versus DFM. They put them to the sword. They got put to the sword. Gentlemen, before we go on to our fourth and final game of the day, as we are only covering the latter four games and the eighth and final game of the full day. Gentlemen, what are your thoughts about what we just witnessed? Brain dead. My, I, I don't have... Yeah. It's gone. DFM are going to be so frustrated again that it is in the clutch moments that they are letting games slip away mm. from them. They were looking pretty smart in this game. And a lot of the plays, as we said, on paper make sense. Bait people with the Heimerdinger turret. Get out with the magical journey. Seems great on paper, but sometimes they are fighting every objective in ways they sometimes just need to give them damn well up. And sometimes these clutch plays... They're losing them to V3. They lose. They lost them to Sengoku. They lost them here to CGA. I know you kind of flubbed a word there when you're saying it's on 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 pay, pay, Piper. I think DFM are following the Pied Piper. I think they're getting dragged into fights that they shouldn't be, and they're getting out team for. Yeah. There's a lot of things happening in the LJL, and that is our seven-time champions getting. Uh, put to the sword. You can't say we don't keep it exciting over here at the LJL. And if all things keep going this way, we might have the most competitive playoffs we've ever seen in the history of the LJL. But with that all said, we need to recompose ourselves. We need a short little break, but we will be coming at you with our match of the day, gentlemen. And dear viewers, that's going to be Detonation Focus Me facing off against Sengoku Gaming. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> 